This is uh, video number 47 in our series on uh, electrical circuit analysis. Um, before we get started, just a reminder that the playlist for all of our videos is featured at the website digital-university.org. Okay, um, in the last video we had considered this circuit and we wanted to solve for the current that was flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. And we did it, uh, solved it by using superposition. We determined that the current going through the 4 ohm resistor was 2 amps flowing in this direction. What we thought we'd do in um, this video is try and solve the same problem uh, using nodal analysis. So what we'll do here as a first step is here we have the 6 ohm resistor. We're going to place this in parallel with the 3 ohm resistor um, by doing a source conversion. Uh, exactly the same type of maneuver as what we discussed. I think it was in video number 22 where the voltage source can be replaced by a current source. The magnitude of that current source is this voltage divided by that resistance 4 amps. Then when we do that, we have a current source here. This resistor is in parallel to that current source. So we can redraw the circuit like this, just operating on this end of it now. Here we would have a current source of 4 amps. And in parallel with that is the 6 ohm resistor. Then we have here the 3 ohm resistor. And then the 4 ohm. And the 6 ohm resistor. Like this for the rest of the circuit. eighteen amps in this direction from this end and this is four amps flowing in this direction from this end this is six ohms three so now the circuit looks like this where we have a current source at each end and here these are in parallel clearly the equivalent resistance is 2 ohms. 6 times 3 is 18 divided by 6 plus 3 is 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So we can redraw the circuit once again. Or actually what we can do is just eliminate this. This will now be 2 ohms. So this circuit here at the top, this circuit is totally equivalent to this circuit. So now working with this circuit, we want to determine what is the current going through the 4 ohm resistor. And looking at this, we can see that here's a branch, here's a branch, here's a branch. So this is a node right here. And then here. And here, this would be a second node. And then this branch, this branch, and this branch flow into a third node. And then down here on the bottom, this all flows into a common node. In fact, we can just put this at ground potential. So here we have node 1, node two and node three and let's just put brackets around these so we don't confuse them with the resistors. This is going to be at a potential, we'll call it V1, a potential V2, a potential V3. If we can solve for these potentials, then we can take the potential difference across this resistor, divide it by four, and that would give us then the current flowing through the resistor. 
So that's going to be our strategy. Um, we're going to need some room. So we're going to erase this. But here again, this is the circuit that we're working with now. And let's just grab a colored pen. This is node 1. This is node 2. This is node 3. All this down here just feeds into a common node. So we can put that at ground. Can we see this OK? All right, very well. So this is that potential V1 that we have to determine, V2 and V3. So let's make some room. Erase this. Let's see, can we... Let's just put this like this. Okay, let's work then with node 1. What do we have? We have 4 amps coming into the node. And then any unknown currents we have as going out of the node. So here we would have, for here we assume that the current is in this direction. We assume the current here is in this direction. So for our node 1, We have four amps going in, so that's plus. Then we're assuming that the current goes out. We assume the current goes out, so we would have minus the magnitude of this current that we're assuming to flow in this direction away from the node, minus V1 divided by 2. And again, the minus sign is for any unknown currents, we're assuming they flow away from the node, and we denote that with a negative sign, as you did in the uh, previous videos. Then we have minus. Now for, here we're working with node 1, so we're saying the current going out would be V1 minus V2 divided by that resistor. So we write it like this, and set it equal to zero. Now, let's just simplify this equation. We can bring the 4 over here. That would be a minus 4. And multiply 3 by a negative 1. Everything comes positive now. Plus, plus, plus. So we have it like this. And let's see. We can simplify this. I think here we're going to get multiplying across by 2. We're going to have multiply across each side of the equation by 4. We'll have 2 times V1 plus V1 minus V2 equals 16. Or here we have 3 times V1 will equal 16 minus V2. So this is the equation that we get from node 1. So let's just write this down over here so we don't lose track of it. Node 1. 3 times V1 equals 16 minus V2. Actually, we're going to bring this over to this side, so that should be plus V2. That's a plus sign. Okay, what we're going to have, of course, is we have three unknowns here, V1, V2, and V3. As we write our three nodal uh, equations for here, here, and here, 
we will have three unknowns. So we have three unknowns and three different equations. We should have no problem solving for each of these unknown voltages. Let's, uh, let's go on and look at this one here. Let's write the equation for this node. Then we'll come back and write the equation for this node. So here we are looking at node 3 now. And let's just erase this. Node 3, what do we have? We have 18 amps going into the node. Going in, that's positive. Then here for the unknown ones, we assume that they're going out of the node. So we would have minus V3 divided by 2. minus, here would be V3 minus V2 divided by 1, or that's just minus V3 minus V2 equals 0. So this is a pretty simple equation. Bring the 18 over here, it's going to be negative. Multiply both sides by negative 1. We have this, and this equation here comes out real simple. We just simply get 3 times V3 minus 2 times V2 equals 36. So let's write this down. This is from node 3. Three times V three minus two times V two equals thirty six. We'll just leave it in that form for right now. Okay, now let's take a look at node number two. And let's just erase this and make some room. Get our third equation. Okay, node number two. There is, that is this one, there is no current source flowing into the node. So we assume everything, all the unknown currents, we assume are flowing out of the node. So what would we have? For here we would have V2 minus V1 divided by 4 with a minus sign by it. So we have minus V2 minus V1 divided by 4. And again, this designates that the current we're assuming to be flowing away from the node. And then here we'll have minus V2 divided by 6. Okay, that's set up, and then here we're going to have V2 minus V3 divided by 1. So there's the equation for node 2. Again, we're assuming the current flows away from the node, the unknown current, the unknown current we're assuming to flow away from the node, and the unknown current here to assume, we're assuming it's a flowing away from the node. Okay, so let's see what this gives us. Uh, we can multiply both sides by negative 1, everything comes out positive. And let's multiply both sides of the equation by 24, and clear these out of here. So multiplying both sides
times 24. You'll have 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we have 6 times V2 minus V1. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So we have plus 4 times V2. And then 24 times V2 minus 24 times V3. And 24 times 0 is still 0. So it looks like this. And then here we can simplify this pretty quickly. And we come out with minus 6 times V1 plus 34 times V2 minus 24 times V3 equals 0. So here's our equation with node 2. And we save that for the last because it involves V1, V2, V3. We have all of these unknown, unknown, unknown. We have these three unknowns in the single equation. But we have relationships among these V1s and V3s and V2 from this equation right here are these two sets of equations that we determined previously. So let's write these down now. We have here that 3 times V1 equals 16 plus V2. That's just this equation. And we have 3 times V3 minus 2 times V2 equals 36. That's this equation right here. We have it written down right here now. OK. So let's see. Let's take a look. Actually, we're kind of running out of time now. We're coming up on our time limit. Let's just stop the video right here. What we're going to do is we're going to get an expression here. Um, for V2, V2 expressed in terms of V3. And then here we have V2. We're going to go ahead and use this final expression for V2 instead of in terms of V3 and put that into here. Then I'm going to use that in this equation here. Come back to us for the second half of that video. And we'll get this curved up in no time at all. What we want to do is solve for this and this. See what this current is here, and see if it matches the same solution that we had in video number 46 when we solved the circuit using um, the principle of superposition. So come back, uh, join us for the second half of the video, and let's see if we can get this wrapped up.